Update. My 15 female sister's husband, 23 female slash 34 male, got me Christmas gift I don't feel comfortable accepting. Original post. Hi, I'm 15 female, my sister is 23, her husband is 34. On Saturday, we did our gifts exchange, and my sister and her husband got me handbag, and they spent about the same amount of money, about $100, and all of my siblings, one older and three younger brothers, 18, 13, 10, and 6. After we were done giving gifts, my brother-in-law came into my room and gave me a separate gift. He said that he noticed I get overlooked a lot and thought I'd appreciate an extra gift. When I opened it, it was a Cartier bracelet. I told him thank you, but I felt weird accepting it. I have two from the same place from my grandmother and I know they're not cheap. I feel like this is too much money to spend on me and not my brothers, but he just told me to keep it on a down low for everyone else so my brothers don't get pissed, and that money isn't a problem and I should just enjoy it. I don't know if it's rude to go to him tomorrow and give it back, and tell him I don't feel comfortable accepting a gift that's worth that much money. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Definitely need to know whether your sister knows. Why wasn't she there with him when he gave it to you? No, it was just him and me. I don't think she knows because he didn't give it to me with her. Thank her for the lovely gift and tell her you love it and that she's a great sister. Easiest way to deal with that. Um, you need to tell your sister. Creating secrets that are just between the two of you is kind of sliding too close to grooming behavior. This dude already has a major age gap relationship with the older sister and now is paying special attention to the 15-year-old? Weird, creepy, and absolutely grooming. Tell your sister and a trusted adult. How old was your sister when they started going out? This really seems like grooming, not just the gift itself, but especially the way he's setting himself up as your hero, making an extra effort with you and casting the rest of your family as neglectful of you. And now for the update. So my sister didn't know about the gift. I told my mom who got mad, because she said it was too much money and it wasn't fair that I got an extra gift. So she called my sister who flipped out because I guess he didn't get her a gift that expensive. So she told me he had to give it back. Then she had a fight with her husband about it. And he ended up lying and saying I asked him to get me the bracelet. And that I had been bugging him for months about it. I don't know why I would do this when I literally already have so much jewelry and barely wear any of it. And basically lied and twisted the whole story to make me look like a spoiled brat. So now my mom and sister are both mad at me and called me spoiled. But I don't care. I'm glad I don't have the gift anymore. It's weird, not the actual gift. The bracelet was really nice, but everything else. He's acting really weird. I was hoping he wouldn't talk to me at all, but he was at my parents' New Year's Eve party last night, and he just made a lot of weird eye contact. But I'm still glad I did it. This dude is totally weird. Definitely stay away from him. And if you had been bugging him, where's the proof? Texts? Calls? This OB. Tell them to prove to them you've been calling and texting. He is a groomer. Always keep your door locked when they are staying over. If you don't have it, ask your dad to install one. I would argue. Go stay the night at a friend's house any time he is over. Make a point to make it known to everyone in your circle what is going on. Friends, their parents, grandparents, be loud about it. I'm so sorry your mom is not protecting you. I can see your sister not wanting to believe her husband is this terrible, but your mom? There is absolutely no excuse for that. So, seek help outside of your mom and sister, and just do what you need to do to stay safe, OP. I can't believe your mom and sister are believing him over you. Is he wealthy? I have no doubt that your brother-in-law is into young women. He's currently dating someone too young for him, while also trying to creep on her teenage sister. He's gross. And it's disturbing that your mom and sister are turning a blind eye. I hate it when women encourage this type of gross behavior by men. Yes, he has a lot of money. I think it's all weird too. You need to go back and tell your mother. Of course, you wouldn't believe me because he lied. But I bet you he can't show one text or phone call or anything. And if you think about it, considering that I don't even wear jewelry, why would I ask for it? And if I ask for it, why would I tell you I thought it was strange? I hope nothing bad happens to me, but if it does, you can look back at this moment and realize that you prioritize your daughter's marriage over your other daughter's safety. 
He gave me the gift because he's giving me inappropriate attention and telling me that I get overlooked and needed something special. As far as I'm concerned, is grooming. I don't forgive you for the way you're treating me, so maybe do your job as a mom and don't treat me like I did something wrong when I didn't. Do you have a dad? Can you tell your grandma? Did you tell your mom about anything else that he did? If he crosses any more boundaries, it sounds like you're on your own to tell him. I don't care as people believe your lies. I want you to stay away from me. Because he's wealthy, it seems like he's being treated like a family asset, and they don't want to mess up your sister's relationship. I bet you, your sister knows the truth in her heart. Just stay strong. Reach out to anyone who you think you can support you like aunts, her uncles, or the moms of some of your close friends. If you were invited anywhere by him or where you would be in their house alone, you should decline. And any time you're going to be alone with him, you should be running your phone work recorder. So sorry you weren't believed. You would have been better off throwing it in the trash. I mean, why would he buy me a gift more expensive than he bought my sister and then claimed that I bugged him for it? He's a 35-year-old man, and he can't say no if I supposedly ask which I didn't. Next story is titled, Update. I-27 female screamed at my husband's 29 male neurodivergent sister, 20 female, and now I don't know how to repair our relationship. Background. My husband and I have been together for four years and married for two. We both come from another country than the one we lived in when we met. Most of our relationships occurred while we were separated from our families. I knew he has a neurodivergent sister, but I hardly ever got a chance to interact with her. Sensitivity to neurodivergent is absent in our country, and very little to no awareness or guidance is provided to families with or without neurodivergent children. I got pregnant with twins earlier this year. We both decided to move back home for the birth and initial few years of our kids' lives, so we could be around family. We live in a house on our own, but my family's close by. I gave birth in the last week of October and I might be dealing with postpartum depression. I also have an increased sensitivity to sounds and smell as well as increased irritability. Ironically, my twins seem to be gifted with the strongest pair of lungs I have ever seen on newborns, and they like to demonstrate their lung capacity every few hours. My poor husband usually is the one to handle the babies and will usually pass them on to me once he has them a little quietened. I have not left the house since birth. Complications from birth plus fear of COVID. Now to the issue at hand. Recently, we received news of my husband's aunt's passing. His entire family had to attend a pre-funeral and funeral rituals. They were all devastated, and understandably so. However, they were unable to find a trained professional at last minute to take care of his sister. I've barely spent time with his sister, and from what I know, she's severely dependent on care. She is high-functioning but has difficulty with emotional outbursts that can be quite violent. She also has extreme sensitivity to sounds. In the heat of the moment and in panic, my husband's family decided since I would be home anyway and not attending the funeral, that I could also look after his sister. I know they were in the wrong. I even begged my husband, but he was already distraught and asked me to help out the family at a time of need. All I was handed was a list and schedule of her medications, as well as a list of allergies and food preferences. I was not prepared for this. Things started going wrong immediately. They were not able to sit her down and explain why she was being removed from her home and being placed in our home for the day. She was not explained why her primary caretaker, mother-in-law, was not going to be there for her, and she was not given any time to adjust. Instead, she was just thrust into a messy and noisy, dark house with loud crying twins and an old, old cat she hates. She immediately did not trust me because of this. I tried explaining things to her as well as I could. My husband had warned me that she can get physically violent, but I did not expect her to do things like pinch, spit, or shove me. She had two minor outbursts within the first couple of hours itself. But then came the major one. I was already swamped with the twins that had a massive headache because of their loud crying. I was struggling to feed them and change them and settle them, during which sister-in-law also needed her meal. I was trying to soothe one baby while also meal prep, but the crying of the babies triggered a major meltdown. While I was trying to manage her, I had put the kids in their bassinet. She held onto my head, pulled my face towards her, and screamed directly into my ear with all her might. Felt like I might pass out. I shoved her and she fell backwards. I managed to gather my thoughts, but it felt like my head was going to split open. I saw her on the floor and immediately felt guilty. I tried, 
I really did, but nothing seemed to work. I called mother-in-law and asked her to come home and explain what had happened. She had lost her sister, but she understood and told me she was on the way, but it would take her nearly an hour to reach. She asked me to give sister-in-law space and keep the kids away from her so as to not trigger her further. When I came out, sister-in-law was not on the floor where I had last seen her. So I went to check the only other room in the house and then the kitchen. What I saw made my blood boil. She had trashed the entire room. We were setting it up as the nursery, and she had smeared what I can only explain to be feces on the walls. Cat slash baby or human, jury still out. I don't know if I even want to know. There was what I presumed to be water all over the floor as well as some glass. She was sitting in one corner of the room rocking back and forth. I walked over to her to try and apologize or even speak to her to make sure she was okay and had not sustained any cuts or injuries. She shoved me hard, and I slipped and fell into some of the glass behind me. A piece sliced through my arm, and I don't know, I lost it. I just started crying and walked away. She followed me, screaming loudly and saying awful words. I know I should have known better. I know she might not know better. But at that moment, I did not care. I screamed at her. I yelled at her and I just could not stop myself. Shortly after, my husband and mother-in-law walked into the house. I told them what had happened, and I apologized over and over again. However, the husband looked broken. He looked at me as if I was a monster. He told me he did not trust me anymore and felt like he did not know me. He called me petty and self-obsessed for fighting with his sister despite knowing of her disability. He told me he could not trust me to be home alone with the children. At that moment, I felt so much guilt and shame that I did not even try to defend myself. Mother-in-law helped clean up the floor, and sister-in-law and my husband grabbed our kids and left. My parents were called and have been staying with me in the house since. My husband is barely speaking to me and says he needs space to figure things out. The children are back with me, but it is as if everyone around me is waiting for the other shoe to drop it for me too. I don't know, lash out or something. I had scheduled therapy soon and have been asking my husband to come with me. He is not ready yet and says he feels like he does not even know me anymore and feels disgusted to even be in my presence knowing how I interacted with his sister. I don't know what to do. How do I proceed? Is there any hope? I know I messed up, but I love him and I don't want to lose him. I've checked up with mother-in-law and sister-in-law, and sister-in-law is all but forgotten about what had happened, and mother-in-law is just distraught overall. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Ask him how would he feel if she's knocked you out or knocked you down, and then got a hold of the babies. He and his mother are dumb asses for leaving you and a sister like that. I really wonder how he would feel if sister-in-law hurt the babies on accident or something. I would be willing to bet that he would still find a way to blame Obi, though. I think that if you keep apologizing, you will give your husband the impression that what he and his family did is okay. They left a woman with special needs in a situation where she was confused, unable to cope without a qualified caretaker, and in a position to harm herself and others, including babies. They were grossly irresponsible and did so much harm. I'm so sorry they did this to you, and to your husband's poor sister who did not deserve to be abandoned by them in that situation. By you apologizing to them, you are continuing to enable them in thinking that what they did was acceptable, when what they did was devastating, harmful, and abusive. To your husband's sister that he pretends to care about, to you that he isn't even pretending to care about, and your babies that your husband is overlooking, you could have been harmed or killed in that situation in the chaos. And now for the update. It's been a while since my original post and I had a short update. A lot has happened and I barely remember much. Mommy brain and sleep deprivation is very real. As recommended, I did send my husband screenshots of some of the comments on my previous post as well as the entire post. My parents are staying with me to help with the twins, so that has been a major help. Mother-in-law and I spoke endlessly about sister-in-law and how to proceed from there. I even admitted that my husband's behavior was making me rethink the marriage in the first place. We spoke about the attempt to have sister-in-law become our responsibility, and also how it might be more helpful to find an assisted living facility for her, and that I volunteered to pay some amount to contribute towards it. Mother-in-law refused to accept the money, but is very up to the idea of the assisted living facility. Later that week, husband was back at the house and asked me to go for a drive with him so we could talk as my parents were in the house and we needed to be able to talk alone. He gave me the space to talk first and tell him what happened and how I felt and how his behavior made me feel. 
I told him I was considering judicial separation from him because I felt abandoned. It made to feel like a criminal for no real fault of mine. I also told him I find it hard to trust him around the twins when he was placing their security so low and considered so little about me. I told him his behavior was inexcusable, even though I was sympathetic for his position and his love for sister-in-law. I kept breaking down while talking as I struggled with confrontation, but he listened very patiently and kept comforting me and encouraging me to carry on without trying to object. He then told me aside. Apparently, sister-in-law had told him I had been neglecting her and had locked myself into the room to neglect her, and that I had hit her and thrown a glass full of water at her in a fit of rage. My guilty behavior when he came home added to him thinking she was correct, and for a moment, he was not being rational. But later, mother-in-law and father-in-law ripped into him about sister-in-law's habit of lying. They had even told him exactly what all had happened as they heard from me, and basically gave him an earful which made him realize he messed up. I know it was not good enough, but over the next week, we transitioned to him moving back home with us, and honestly, things have been great. He agreed to go to therapy, and I have had some individual sessions and one preliminary couple session. The holidays and COVID have been making a more frequent schedule difficult. He has been trying to make up for things. Yes, it will take longer for us to get through it. But I'm hoping we will in due time. We have a lot to figure out and a lot of details left to iron out, but we had a lifetime ahead of us for it. For now, I am just grateful to have him home and us to be on the same page once again. I remember your first post. I think your mother-in-law and father-in-law are great people. I'm happy for you that your husband has come around. I just wonder why it took him so long. Was he embarrassed by his reaction? Or embarrassed for believing his sister when she lied to him? He initially left town for a weekend for work and went no contact with pretty much everyone except a text he was fine. After that, it was equal parts embarrassment as well as a bruised ego which took him under a week to get over and drop by. How can you lock yourself into a room to neglect someone? I know this isn't the point, but I'm glad things are working out well for you, but I needed to ask. By basically locking her out so she could not reach me if she was in an emergency. Ah, uh, okay. I'm not sure why your husband would believe that, but I'm underestimating the level that emotion can inform an argument. My son has ASD, and is just learning to lie. It's not fun. I hope the improvement and communication for everyone in the family is helping. Admitting things aren't easy can make a huge difference in your everyday life, can't it?